And obviously, we will brief you again later, maybe around 5 o'clock. We can give you ages of the victims, conditions of the victims, where they live, things of that nature. Uh, behind us in the mire, they've closed the store down for us and helped us with uh, reunification with the parents. We've got a lot of upset parents wanting to know the uh, what's going on with their kids. There was an orderly evacuation. The school did everything right. Everybody uh, uh, remained in place. They barricaded themselves. And... Uh, 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 Tim here has done a great job in terms of preparing. You never want to prepare for something like this, but you have to. And the school district's done a wonderful job preparing. All the doors over there are marked at the high school. If you've seen them, deputies responded. They knew where to go. We've had assistance from other police agencies nearby, uh, Lapeer County Sheriff, uh, uh, Oxford Police Department, other local police departments. The, the response has been overwhelming. We're still doing a secondary and we're doing a third search of the high school just to make sure there's no other victims out there. Um, if there's anything else I missed or I can answer, I will answer and I'll defer he to him. Was this a student? It, yes, it's a 15-year-old student who was a sophomore at the high school. Has he said before he invoked an uh, attorney, did he say anything about what precipitated this? Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Okay. Was there any warning, Mike, ahead of time? Was there any messaging? Did he put out anything? That's all under investigation at this time. We have uh, literally probably a hundred different uh, detectives and support out here right now. We're going to talk to everybody. We're going to go through everything. But at this point in time, I can't tell you that we have that or we don't have that. Any reason to believe the initial victims were targeted directly or was it random? Don't know at this point in time. Still under investigation. Has notification been made to parents yet or do parents still not know? I believe all the parents know, but I can't say that for certain, but I believe they do. So you're saying three deceased. How many injuries? We have three deceased, six others that were shot. One of the six is a teacher. One of the witnesses I talked to said she heard shots it paused she heard shots again do you have any idea how long he was in the school he fired multiple shots i can tell you that um, we've recovered multiple shell casings in the school um, somewhere in the area obviously with that many people shot we're thinking you know 15 to 20 shots that were fired so Over what kind of weapon of time, was, how long was he it's a handgun how long, how long was he in the school so it's a semi-automatic handgun that's all i can tell you at this point did he have more than one magazine uh, I'm not going to get in. Obviously, if he fired up multiple shots, yeah. more than 15, he'd have more than one magazine, yeah. yes. How was he apprehended? Up, deputies took him into custody and responded. I can't tell you the exact circumstances of how that occurred, but deputies confronted him. He had the weapon on him. They took him into custody. In school? Yes, sir. Was it the child, the child that had the issue last week, a couple weeks ago back with the deer head? I'm not aware of that, so I can't answer that. Was this over the course of like 15, 20 minutes? Do we know how long? Five minutes. The whole thing lasted five minutes. Was it a classroom or a common area? I'm not sure on that. I'll have to get back to you again. We'll do another briefing later on when we, we can, get more we details. Any indication that he was targeting a certain room for these students and the specific teacher? I can't tell you that because I don't know. Yeah. Okay. We told us a lot and we appreciate it. Okay. Can we talk to the superintendent for a moment, please? That's up to Tim. I, I really don't have anything. I, I really don't have anything uh, more to say other than that uh, you certainly can pray for our families here in Oxford and our students. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm learning uh, information real time just as you all are. So I, I really don't have any more info to add. Or, can you shed any light on who the student is, a 15 year old? I, uh, I can't, know. What's your reaction to this? Oh, of course, I'm shocked. It's devastating. Superintendent, can you say and spell your name, please, sir? Tim Throne, T-H-R-O-N-E. So you had a lot of things in place. One point of entry when school is open. Uh, these students get Alice training as well. I know that students and teachers are, or rather teachers are able to communicate with one another. You also have this point of safety that you're able to get students to as well. Can you talk to me about why you didn't have metal detectors? No. Okay. Just that's my answer to your question, no. Okay. Is that something that's ever come up? Not that I can recall, no. Do you have any background information on the student? Have there been any issues with this student prior to today? Not yet. Uh, you know who the student is? I, we don't know the name. I, I don't know the names of the victims yet. Yeah. I don't know that family's been contacted yet. Right. Okay. So I, we, we still got our homework to do. Certainly. Let us go do did. it, and yeah, we'll no, come back. Yeah, no, of course you do, and we know that this is difficult, so we appreciate you talking. So one, one other thing, Superintendent, yeah. Superintendent, can you tell us if there are any plans for tomorrow? Does anybody? Uh, can you I'll, tell I'll, us? I'll let you know as soon as I get back, and 
have a chance to talk with my team. Uh, what, what time is it right now? Um, good Three, question. So if, if they're going to do another uh, interview at 5, we'll, we'll let our families know by 5 what the plans for tomorrow are. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank we you. appreciate okay, it. I've got John Lyman here speak, spoken, speaking for all the fire departments, and I'll tell you what resources were brought here. Chief, John, can you say just, your name oh, yeah. and spell everything for me? John Lyman, L-Y-M-A-N. I'm the uh, public information officer. I work for Rochester Hills Fire Department. Gotcha. Thank you. So we had uh, we were dispatched along with uh, the PD and the sheriff's office. We had about 25 agencies that responded, close to 60 ambulances. We had a couple of helicopters land also. We did transport uh, those six patients. Uh, the, the number I'm not totally for sure on, but we did transport multiple patients uh, to area hospitals. Gotcha. And, and that's how many how many units? We, we had a close to 60 units that were dispatched here. So you call for mutual aid, obviously. Obviously, yes. And so you yes. brought in those many units, why? Well, we didn't know how many how many victims we had originally. so. You, you just you just start bringing everybody in. I was going to say, can you describe your procedures? What kind of a playbook you pull out for a day like today? Well, we we, we do we we do uh, practice that, and we've worked with the sheriff's office very closely on on uh, this type of incident. So so the idea of bringing up uh, units from multiple departments and private agencies is that's that's a, that's pretty much a standard. We we practice for that. And you handle fire as well as EMS response. Are they still? Everyone is out. Okay. You handle fire as well as EMS response? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And it's in a fluid situation like this. You really don't know what you're going to find. No, you, you don't. Get. No, you don't. No, so, you don't. So how do you and your, your personnel handle a case like this? Today? Well, we run through the incident command system, um, you know, a, a unified command system with the sheriff's office, and then units are units are dispatched and brought up. and. And then, you know, there's more than that even. There's, you know, there's other emergencies going on at the same time. And so our guys have got to be prepared for that and got to move up from those other departments and they're covering other areas too. So um, a com the incident command structure does work and it, that's, what, that's what we're working with planning. Under Sheriff, I do have one other question yes. for you. Obviously this is still under investigation. What are you looking for? You're, I'm sure you're trying to figure out if this person was acting alone if there are others just give us at this a, a point checklist. in time we believe he acted alone with there's no other shooters there's no other gunmen we don't believe anybody at this point in time uh, pending further investigation that he planned this with anybody else but we will be doing social media checks we will be doing talking to all the students as many as we can that we're here today that's why we have so many officers here and so many detectives here so that everybody and anybody can be talked to that has any knowledge of him or what he was going to do or after the fact you can mentioned you, the fbi is here yes uh, tim, could, tim waters could you please step up sir yeah uh, identify yourself uh yourself for us please yeah i'm tim waters i'm the special agent charge here for the fbi in michigan and what's your role in this today yeah at this point we just you know we we deployed out here as soon as we heard of the incident uh, incidents like this are tragic uh, obviously uh, we're here to support the the, uh, the Oakland county sheriff's office and the, and the local police departments out here with anything they need at this point that's, you, that's the extent of our participation so you've heard what everyone else has said is there anything else that you're able to add to no. that in other words what are you looking for what are the things that you're trying to find out yeah we're going to plug in with, with these folks we're going to provide any assistance that they request of us at this point uh, we have victim services plenty of resources we can bring to bear if needed uh, but you know Oakland County is a very well resourced county and I'm sure that you know that they have the tools they need but we're here to help if needed that, that's could, all I have right now you, you could also help to figure out if there were any warning signs with this 15 year yeah listen we're, we're gonna we're gonna look at everything we're gonna we're gonna assist the as part of the investigation and we'll just you know, one step at a time. That's all I have right now. Thank you so Thank much. You. We appreciate you all. Okay, yes. Do you have any information about the gun? We don't have any of that information at this point in time. Can I trouble you to please reiterate one more time when he was initially confronted and gave up or what? The what? call, first call, my information is the first call came in at 1251. Within five minutes, he was in custody by our deputies. Is this lock, locker been put through and any other weapons? There, there's no other weapons that we're aware of. That's correct. Are there any uh, liaison, police liaison officers at this? There's school? a deputy assigned to the high school full time. Yes. One Did of they, yours? He was one of the deputies that helped take him into custody. So and, an, was, and another so, deputy. So he Are you was aware here. which hospitals the victim transported to? Uh, various hospitals. I prefer not to say what hospitals they went to, just in case. Were there any shots fired at the officers? No. He gave up without um, uh, any problems.
Under Sheriff, do we know what he was wearing? Did he have body armor or anything on or normal clothes? Uh, there's no indication he was wearing body armor, no. Was he injured in the... He's not injured. Entrance? No. And obviously no indication of how he got the gun in there yet. Uh, we know, but I'm not going to say right now. And no indication from other students of previous threats that you know well, that They're all being interviewed now, so I can't say. I'm sure that will come out later. Thank you. Okay, okay folks. The, uh, I'm sorry. Gearhead? Any connection with the uh, severed gearhead that was found a few weeks ago? I have no idea about that. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. Thanks, Under Sheriff. Thank okay, you. we'll be Thank back you. maybe Thank around, around five, 5 o'clock. Is you know we'll, we'll give you more update around five o'clock. Five o'clock. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so okay. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oakland County Under Sheriff Mike McCabe, unfortunately dashing the one piece of positive news that we were trying to cling to was that we had not heard that there were any fatalities that have occurred. He just informed us that three students have been killed in the shooting today, six others wounded. It's heartbreaking. One of them a teacher. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. We were holding on hope that that, that that was not going to be the case. But when you hear that three students are, yeah. you know, went to school as an innocent child to learn and are are dead this afternoon. It's just unbelievable. We are learning more information about the gunman. They're not releasing the name, but we can tell you it was a 15 year old boy. He was a sophomore, um, fired 15 to 20 shots. So, I mean, obviously, uh, he, he was on a mission. We don't know if there was any other um, in, uh, threat or anything like that said, said ahead of time. Um, but the good news in this was that when that first 911 call was made at 1251, police say a deputy that was actually assigned to the school was able to take part in taking him down. And had him in custody within five minutes. And yet, uh, I think we could read from what M M Mike McCabe was telling us there, uh, reloaded somewhere in the middle of this with this semi-automatic handgun and uh, ended up uh, killing three, wounding six others, including a teacher, uh, and yet was taken into custody so quickly. But that was uh, the kind of terror and havoc that he was able to wreak in just such a short period of time. We uh, did not shoot at police officers, and right. when they did, were able to get with him, in a sense, he did not put up a fight. So it was like he came there with that. his mission, he did what he did, and then just, yeah. you know, and he, of course, was not injured as many times as the situation. And we unfortunately don't know anything about uh, the motives or what uh, was on his mind at the time. Uh, the undersheriff just telling us that so far he has been mum and uh, wants to speak to an attorney before he uh, continues at all with the uh, interview with police. Uh, who, uh, like so many of us, want to understand what was at the heart of what happened. Not that it will ever make this ki any kind of sense uh, that would explain three deaths and six people fighting for their lives in the hospital, perhaps fighting for their lives. We hope we'd, we'd, we'd have no word on their conditions. We're told that uh, come about five o'clock, so about another two hours from now, we'll have another briefing, at which time they will not only hopefully update us on those conditions and have names uh, for us as well. But we're also told that's when they'll be announcing whatever plan there will be for Oxford High School for tomorrow uh, as they try and move forward in this very, uh, this is pioneer work. Uh, nobody making the decisions right now has dealt with this kind of uh, tragedy before at the school. And uh, so they will have to be making a decision now about how they proceed, get the school, what they do with uh, the school year. Obviously, we're going to need counselors uh, to stand by who, because there are going to be a lot of students who are going to need a lot of help to get through this and parents as well. Yeah, it's yeah. just uncharted territory. Paula Tutman was standing by live as this news conference was going on with uh, Under Sheriff Mike McCabe. I know there was a lot of questions being thrown out. Um, some, some horrific news this afternoon, Paula. Three students have horrific. lost their lives. Horrific. And one teacher, in, uh, well, three students killed, six people injured including a teacher, and, and that is absolutely horrific news. But let's go over those details again, just to encapsulate them. This thing happened in about five minutes. Uh, within that time, police say that they received somewhere in the neighborhood of more than 100 911 calls. So people, students, and teachers were dialing in saying, hey, we've got a problem here. Uh, there is an on-site police liaison who apparently helped take this student in. We're talking about a 15-year-old with a semi-automatic pistol and several magazines. Now, we can deduce that from what Under Sheriff Mike McCabe said because he said that if it is a pistol, well, first of all, think about uh, a semi-automatic pistol and how many firing rounds you have in there. So that means that this student was actually able to reload that pistol and fire off quite a few shots. I, uh, Chester, did you hear? Did he say somewhere around 15 shots or so? Do you remember? 
the number of shots. I think he said, uh, we've got several crews here, so we're going by different memories. So we think there was somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 shots, but that police liaison that who's inside the school, that's what their job is. They were able to confront that student. The student apparently gave up without any issues or any challenges at all. So we're talking about an event that happened within five minutes. But let's think about in that five minutes, three students are dead, six people are injured, including a teacher. We do know that that was a student, 15 year old, who was a student at that time. Now there's something going on that I hadn't heard before, but, but uh, uh, several of the reporters have been asking about, did this have anything to do with a severed deer head that was found at the school last week? And uh, uh, Under Sheriff McCabe said he didn't know. So they still don't know what a motive is. Um, they do know how, by the way, the gun got into the school, but they're not saying right now. Uh, as I said earlier, this is a school that has a lot of safety procedures in place. Uh, there are only two ways in when school opens and when school closes. But at 745, once classes start, that door 17 shuts door number one stays open and you have to be buzzed in and so this is a student who apparently got into the school with a gun these students have alice training they have doors that lock on the interior it is a vast complex and uh teachers are able to communicate with one another and when they detect where the or find out where the danger is they're able to move students out and then those students can be brought here or are brought here to this predetermined spot. It's a Meyer parking lot. The school is actually, I don't know if you can see up there, Justin, but the school is actually up the hill. But the uh, teachers were able to get the students out to this predetermined safety spot for reunification with parents. And so we've been watching a line of parents trying to get into the Meyer parking lot. Uh, it doesn't look like the line is as long. Um, and so, I, you know what, it's, it's hard to tell. There's a lot going on, so I, I can't say whether or not all parents have been uh, unified with students. Um, I got the sense that the parents whose students were killed in this have been notified, but I do want to be clear that I am not completely clear on that. Again, they know who the student is, but they still have to interview other students, go through social media, do an investigation, uh, so they can try to find out what precipitated this, whether or not there was a motive or what the motive was. But, but here is the thing that, that we have to take away. There are three students that are dead and there are students who saw and heard this. And this is a community that is going to be hurting, rightfully so, and grieving. Six people injured and we don't know the extent of those injuries but but this is a an horrific and horrific thing to happen to a school most schools are prepared to some degree with safety procedures when people say i didn't think it could happen here well we all know it can happen everywhere or schools wouldn't prepare the only thing that this school did not have in place they did not have metal detectors and they did not have bag checks. We're talking about a school with 1,700 students. Bag checks would take a great deal of time. When I asked the superintendent why they didn't have, or I said, D you know, did you have metal detectors? He said, no. Can you tell me why? He said, no. No other answer other than that. Yes. But, but I have to think that school districts will have to rethink that. I know you were talking with parents or a parent earlier. I wanted to share that sound if we can. Can you set up this interview for us, Paula, who you spoke with? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So when I got on when I got on site, I, I saw a parent uh, in her vehicle. Her face was in her hands. She was shaking to the core. Her belief was that her daughter had not gone to school that day. She was actually across the street getting a massage. And when she heard about this, she wasn't sure if her child had gone to school. And so this is a portion of that conversation. I'm just so emotional because you never think it's going to happen here and the kids just are all a big part of this community and it is, I'm so scared for them and my daughter is safe but I don't know if all of her friends are safe and I don't know if my nieces and nephews are safe so, but I think they are, I'm getting information so I think they're doing okay but these peer, parents are just they're going through hell, and I can't even imagine it if they don't know where their kids are. 
What did Lily tell you? That there was some shots fired and that she was very scared um, for her friends. My daughter happened to be home today, which I feel kind of bad because I said kind of suck it up, but I can't. I'm just so happy she was home. What brings you here then if your daughter's already home? You're, you're, you said nieces, nephews? Yes. Um, I actually work in this building and I was in a massage because I'm a massage therapist. Um, and I was in a massage when the news came out and I didn't know if my daughter was okay. This is what's happening right now. Parents are trying to figure out whether or not their, their kids' friends are safe whether or not relatives are safe. And, and we're not, remember, we're not just talking about students here. We're talking about faculty. We're talking about teachers. We're talking about staffers. And so what's happening right now is this network of students and parents are trying to figure out who's who. Um, again, the, the, the names of the three deceased students have not been released. The names of the injured have not been released. Um, but certainly we ache, even as reporters, we ache for these parents and for this community to go through this. In five minutes, three young lives are lost. Six people are injured, including a teacher. And this is a an horrific and horrific event to cover, um, no matter how you look at it, guys. Yeah, Paula, we were mentioning that the one good piece of news we had that we were clinging to heading into that briefing was that we had not heard that any of these had become fatalities. And yet now we know Three well, lives have ended today. Thousands have been changed forever. And when he made that announcement, it just felt like being punched in the stomach. Uh, her, awful. Well, for sure. So as reporters, we all have sources. We're all working our sources. And, and indeed, even on my way here, I, I had heard that there was at least one fatality, possibly three. But we can't confirm that right. until police confirm that. Yeah. And in fact, that's the other thing that we, I want to point out, because I thought that was really interesting. You noted it earlier uh, when uh, Mike McCabe said they know how the gun got into the school, but they weren't prepared to share that yet. There will be a number of pieces of information, and this is just sort of a par for the course uh, on anything that even though they feel like they have uh, all of the information, they have their suspect. They, they, don't, they don't believe that person to be a suspect. They believe that person to be the gunman. They have all that in front of them and at hand. However, the case will eventually still have to be prosecuted, and they have to hang on to certain people pieces of evidence and certain pieces of knowledge about the case uh, that will be a part of that eventual prosecution. It's it, it's such a convoluted way because you have to gather every single yeah. thing and like you and like you know Mike McCabe said you know we, we can't release this information right now because what you can expect is right now not only are they going through social media yeah. they're going to the gunman's home they are going through their house they're looking for anything right. on the computer on the laptop if there's any other victims they're tracking down the parents they're tracking down any siblings they have to find out if oh, there's whatever any. Whatever friends at, right. the, at the school. There's a lot of police work still ahead yeah, here. Yeah, there is a yeah. lot of police. In the meantime, it's, it's, you know, my phone's just going crazy because yep. I have so many friends who have friends who friends have of children, friends children or they have a niece. Of, right. I, I've got a, a friend who is texting and I don't want to, you know, give the identity or anything of, 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 the, of some of these young people who have seen things, but they said, you know, you know, I was in the hallway. I saw. Yeah. And, and now I'm scared. One of my friends is dead. Yeah. How do you and she's sitting there right now with her mother just bawling and crying and we're waiting to five o'clock so we can find out these names and they just don't know if their friend survived. It's just... You know, when, we, when, we, when bad things happen at schools, we talk about it all the time. We say that counselors will be made available and that's on all manner of different things that sometimes happen at school. And we can kind of sometimes just run right by that little nugget of information that counselors will be available. This is going to be a massive lift uh, to try and help these students and their parents and siblings and family members deal with this uh, massive trauma that has been inflicted on their hearts and minds today. And we have to remind each other, these are children still. Yeah. You know, exactly. I mean, heaven forbid an adult goes A child who's this. in custody, 15.
15 right. years old. I mean, they don't have the, the brain capacity yet right. to, to deal and to understand. And yeah. uh, we're looking at another stretcher going, and I'm not sure if this is video or live. I think it is. I think we're back to video. I, I think we're yeah. back to video, uh, yeah. But if, if you are just joining us, uh, it's now uh, getting close to 3.30. It was about uh, just a little bit um, before 1 o'clock that all of this first developed at Oxford High School. And it took us uh, a while to get our first, uh, almost two hours to get our first briefing from the undersheriff of Oakland. County, but here was the announcements that uh, Mike McCabe made just a short time ago. Around 1251 today, we received a 911 call of an active shooter at the high school. Uh, deputies immediately responded, and uh, we received over 100 911 calls into our dispatch center, over 100. Um, the uh, deputies uh, took a suspect into custody within five minutes of the original 911 call. They recovered a handgun from the suspect. The suspect fired multiple shots. There's multiple victims. Uh, it's unfortunate that I have to report that we have three deceased victims right now who are all believed to be students. We have six others that were shot. One was a school teacher. They're all at local hospitals being treated for various injuries. Um, again, uh, multiple shots were fired. He did not give us any resistance when he was taken into custody. He's currently being transported back to Pontiac. Uh, for potential, well, I, he's already already invoked his right to, to not speak. So he wants an attorney. He's not telling us anything at this point in time. Uh, Under Sheriff of Oakland County, Mike McCabe, with really our first uh, fuller briefing on exactly what happened this afternoon. We still have obviously a ton of questions, uh, which we hope will be addressed here coming up about another hour and a half from now, as we expect another briefing to come along at about five o'clock. But that response, a hundred. Uh, 911 calls coming in, and we heard uh, um, John uh, Lyman, who's with the fire department in Rochester Hills, talking about how they had 60 units responding because they had no grasp of how big or how awful this might be. And in situations like this, your, one of your questions is, is, is there, are there multiple people? Is yeah. there a plan? Are there multiple guns? What are the threats? We need to assess it quickly. And from what we understand, uh, as Mike McCabe said, uh, this gunman acted alone. Let's listen more. We believe he acted alone. There's no other shooters. There's no other gunmen. We don't believe anybody at this point in time, uh, pending further investigation, that he planned this with anybody else. But we will be doing social media checks. We will be doing talking to all the students, as many as we can, that we're here today. That's why we have so many officers here and so many detectives here, so that everybody and anybody can be talked to that has any knowledge of him or what he was going to do, or after the fact. So the focus is spread out right now all over the place around Oxford. You've still got a lot of people uh, at the high school, uh, the investigation that goes on there. You've got all of the staging area that's going on at the mire just north of the school where parents are trying to be reunited for the first time with their children. And you also have a, a scene at the hospital in Pontiac, although they, they said a number of different hospitals. So I'm not sure that that's where all six of the shooting victims uh, were taken, but at least some we do know. Yeah, we did hear the sirens. Hank Winchester is live outside of McLaren Hospital in downtown Pontiac. I know that hospital was on lockdown a bit ago. Give us the very latest tank. Karen, Devin, good afternoon to both of you. Yes, the hospital, we are being told, remains on lockdown. In fact, we've been seeing it play out all day. People here for medical appointments making their way to the main entrance, being turned away by a guard inside because of the situation that is playing out. And we are being told that some of the victims from the high school were brought here, uh, it being the closest hospital to the high school itself. Now, we also heard from McCabe, the undersheriff in Oakland County, talking about the investigation. Obviously, uh, the team in place there at the high school, uh, going classroom to classroom, uh, working to talk with witnesses, figuring things out. But here at the hospital, an investigation also underway. In fact, take a live look behind me. You can see a few of the uh, uh, vehicles from the Oakland County uh, Sheriff's Department. There were three SUVs here, two now that we have in sight. We also saw about an hour ago an agent with the FBI. Uh, he was wearing clothing, identifying himself as an agent, uh, making his way here to the emergency trauma entrance of the hospital. 
You see outside here, there are a few guards. You see the dog. Uh, they have been working to restrict access into the hospital itself. And just a short time ago, and we're going to respect their privacy, we did see a group of uh, people arrive here at the hospital. They are still outside, but they were hugging one another. Uh, they were all looking at their cell phones, uh, possibly working to get information, maybe if they have a loved one here. Or it could be a situation where uh, they were trying to visit somebody who was already here at the hospital not being allowed in right now uh, because of the ongoing lockdown situation. We're working to get more information from uh, the hospital itself, from McLaren Oakland Pontiac, uh, about how they're handling this situation moving forward right now. Uh, if you have an appointment here, if you have a loved one here, uh, right now they're restricting access to the building itself, not only to the main hospital here across the street from the emergency trauma entrance, but also on the back side of the building too. But you know, the main thing here is investigators not only having to work that scene, that active uh, situation that played out at the high school with FBI, uh, the Sheriff's Department, Michigan State Police there, but clearly here now, the investigation is turning to the possible victims who may be here. Uh, the Oakland County Sheriff's Department, the FBI, they have their teams inside right now working to find out from possible victims uh, what was playing out, what was going on in that high school when this all developed uh, just before one o'clock this afternoon. That is why we see investigators here right now. That is why you see the uh, investigators in the high school. They are working to put the pieces of this puzzle together. What happened earlier today? Why did it happen? What information can they from the can they get rather uh, from those who witnessed this attack? And and this hospital being the closest one to the high school, obviously a, a close point to take those who are dealing with an emergency situation. We did see some ambulances about an hour ago around the back side of the building, which is the emergency drop off, uh, make their way uh, back behind the building. Uh, you know, lights were on, uh, sirens, one was escorted by a police cruiser. Uh, and then here you see, uh, and you can see more activity now with, with different members of law enforcement, uh, the security team here from the hospital, not only working to make sure that members of the general public don't make their way inside, but obviously working uh, the investigation inside this building and trying to get information from those who were directly impacted by these tragic events today. Uh, Dev and Karen, that's kind of the visual scene here from the hospital. Again, we're working to get more information from a hospital spokesperson regarding the lockdown. If you yourself have a family member here or you have a medical appointment uh, here at the hospital either today or tomorrow, uh, we're going to try to get information about how that yep. could affect you and your family members moving forward. You bet, Hank. The idea of a hospital being remaining on lockdown might seem unnecessary to some, but there are a lot of things uh, that law enforcement and hospital authorities have to keep considering here, and that is even though Under Sheriff McCabe says it was a lone gunman who acted by himself and they have that person in custody, they have to worry about uh, copycats. They have to worry about people who might try to take advantage of, of this situation, which is one of the mind-numbingly stupid things about human behavior that somebody would see opportunity right. in all of this grief and despair that others are feeling but that's the reality so the hospital right now remaining on lockdown and that's also the reason why the other schools in the oxford school district were on lockdown right. because they just didn't want any other attention or or, or anything yeah. going on there yeah. but they're letting parents pick them up meantime parents are ru rushing as much as they can to that mire yeah. to pick their children up over at the garden center the myers is north of the school jason colthorpe is there i know you've been talking with parents. Jason, uh, give us the very latest. Oh, as we see people. Yeah, this is actually uh, uh, Treshawn and his mom, Robin Redding, who uh, Treshawn actually didn't uh, go to school today. I haven't gotten a chance to talk to him. He was actually just briefing police on what uh, is believed to be kind of the threat that was leading up to this. Treshawn, just a second, I'm going to start with your mom. Uh, walk me through what this was like as a parent and, and explain. Treshawn didn't go to school today because of a perceived threat, correct? Well, he didn't go to school today because he was just not feeling comfortable with going to school. He had a, a conscience of saying, like, I don't want to go to school today. Mom, can I just do it online? So I just said, OK, yeah. But then before him saying that, he said, Mom, none of the none of the rest of the kids is going today. And I saw why the rest of them not going. And he said, no. So I said, OK, he said it wasn't answering because all of them always say, I'm ready. I'm up. I'm getting on the bus mm -hmm. or meet me here that nature and that wasn't happening today.
And, and why was that? Um, was there an I, uneasy feeling about the yeah, kids? Yeah, he was just it? yeah. That was just an uneasy feeling that he had and didn't want to go. I I just got like a little feeling that like. When I got up today, like, I text me and my little cousins because I'm a senior. Like, they're, like, a little bit younger than me. So I text them, and I was like, is anybody up? Who's going to school? Like, get up. Let's go. We're going to school. No one responded. So I'm like, Man, this, this is weird. Like, we never do this. Like, either, like, somebody's sick or, like, something's something's wrong. So what I'm like, was, you know, what was worrying everybody? There was, there have been some uh, some ominous threats posted in recent days. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. There it is. I've been hearing the threats too, and it's like, you know, kids they they play around and say, oh, we're gonna shoot up the school or this. this you don't supposed to play around with that. Right. Like, this is serious. You can't do that. So I mean, like, it's a lot of stuff that's been going on. You know, this school it's been it's been tragic, and it's like, I don't even know. It's just. It's, when you heard about what was going on at school today, you weren't there, but then you learned there's an active shooter. What was going through your mind? My first thing when I got up, I got up, I put my shoes on, put my coat on, I told my mom, come on, let's go. I have a friend. He's more like my cousin. I think of him as my cousin. And I say, he's in there. He's the only one that went to school. And I need to get up there to get him out of that school because I don't want anything to happen to him. And he is OK? Yeah, he is fine. He's at home. He's a little bit scared, but he'll be OK. This has been crazy. Now, the threats that we've been talking about, I was just talking to the undersheriff again about that. They're looking into these threats. Uh, there was uh, something posted about uh, a deer head. A deer head? You, oh, tell me that, about that. That happened like probably like a month ago, which is like somebody cut off a deer head, his neck, about like around his neck. An actual deer head. An actual deer head, blood and everything. And threw it in our courtyard, in our school, which you have to get inside the school to get in that courtyard and it's outside and they like drew all on the buildings on the wall looking for our principal they want to talk to our principal asking him where he is uh, i mean it's it's a lot to this i mean i don't have all the details yeah. but and they're I still know. investigating us he's confirmed if it's connected to this sophomore who pulled the trigger today you and as you guys got here you saw a couple of the students come out and i don't want you to name any names because they're still notifying people but uh how is that hitting you, knowing that you know some of these kids that were shot today? I mean, it, it worries me a lot. I mean, I, I grew up with these kids for so long. I've been going out here for almost like four or five years now. And I know of these kids that they're hurt and they're, they're sad. And their parents don't know what to do, but it's going to be okay. God will heal everybody. Everybody will be fine. We're certainly glad you're okay. And Robin, from a parent's standpoint, Talk to me about safety. Do you feel safe letting Trayshawn go back to school here? No, I do not because they haven't, they haven't got this under control. If all these things are already happening, you never know what might happen again. And I'm not finna risk my child being able to get hurt. So I would prefer just to have him online. I'm not sending him back to the school. There's nothing that nobody can say, oh, you going to school. Oh, it's over. You don't know. You, you can't predict anything for that to happen. So, no. I'd rather for him to go online. let their voice be heard then mine is going to be heard yeah. you got to be able to get these kids under control they have to they have to get this whole thing under control security is a must you can't say it it won't happen this can happen anywhere yeah. so yeah i'm i'm not sending my kid back to no school that he can't even sit down and get a lesson to know that you go, I'm going to get a phone call and say, my child been shot or it's a shooting. No, that's devastating. It's, it's crazy. It's, I, it's just I can only way. imagine you must have been thanking, uh, just thanking God that your son yes. did not go to school. Yes, I, I was praying all the way, thanking God, a blessing. Hey, you got to listen to your kids. And he was very firm of saying, I'm not going. Yeah. So. Well. Robin, we're glad he's okay, and thank you both for talking to us. You're welcome. We appreciate it. Uh, and David Karen, by the way, uh, the undersheriff had just told me a minute ago that uh, we're expecting another briefing.
coming up at five o'clock. It's uh, we still got a long way to go before that. But as they actively investigate some of this, uh, I, I can tell you that uh, we're across the street from Meyer, where the original staging area was, but there's been all kinds of overflow. And families have come across here, and uh, Homeland Security has reached out to um, a, a bike shop over here that just has a lot of property, that, and uh, they're able to house some kids there if they need to. So th it's become a staging area over here. And, and, and in talking to some parents over there, uh, I can tell you we, a few of them were waiting word on their loved ones to find out if their kids were okay. And it's just a scene, you know, straight out of every parent's nightmare uh, as they try and wait for that. So we're waiting, we're uh, waiting for an update and uh, we will update you as soon as we get that. But for now, I'll send it back to you in the studio. Yeah. He was the first one over here that had brought to their attention that there had been other threats in recent days and going back a month ago to the deer head situation he was talking about where someone posted it. And when we talked to her earlier, by the way, she said the threat that really uh, spurred her son and some friends to not go to school was much more explicit. It included the words saying, uh, if you come to school today, but it, they weren't sure who it was directed at. If you come to school today, you will get shot. So there was an explicit threat out there and uh, officers learned of it. This is a very fluid situation for police as well. And uh, they brought him over to try and debrief him. And they were talking to him for a long time. And uh, you can just the connection, the emotion there, like you saw, Karen, once he got out of the vehicle, gave him a hug. I mean, it's a lot of hugs going around today for sure. Yeah. Okay.
but my son has a foot in and fire trucks and you can see the other emergency crews and police services uh, vehicles you can see the brake lights like, they just tore into that grass section just breaking yeah. jumping out and running to save these kids we did learn from paula tupman the way their system works with the school because this school's big i mean it's spread 1, out 1700 students it's yeah they were able to, to unlock certain doors once yeah. they knew it was safe to get those kids out and, and you know uh, kudos to their practices kudos to the ability for for those teachers to remain calm and to keep the children safe that were able to stay safe. Other children just simply ran out of the door when they were in the hallway. And we do hear that the first shots did happen in a hallway right. with that 15 year old sophomore. And then somewhere in the course of things, a bathroom as well, right. apparently. Uh, but uh, we know very little about what that student had in mind uh, under Sheriff McCabe telling us that he has said uh, almost nothing to the to investigators and in fact has uh, demanded attorney. Uh, I, I don't know if he had uh, said anything at all that might uh, explain his reasoning for what he did today that uh, necessarily that would be shared with us uh, at this point yet, uh, because this investigation, again, is in its very early stages. Uh, we are still just about, uh, we're less than three hours uh, into this uh, horrible day at Oxford High School. And as you had said, the... Yeah. Okay, we're going to go back to an interview that Paula Tutman did with a mom. And to set this up, this mom was near the school and she had uh, let her child stay home, from what we understand. But still, hearing this news, I, I, I think any parent, you don't have to be a parent, any of us can identify with the kind of worry uh, that you will hear in her voice. I'm just so emotional because I, you never think it's going to happen here. And the kids just are all a big part of this community and it is I'm so scared for them and my daughter is safe but I don't know if all of her friends are safe and I don't know if my nieces and nephews are safe so, but I think they are I'm getting information so I think they're doing okay but these peer parents are just they're going through hell and I can't even imagine it if they don't know where their kids are what did Lily tell you that there was some shots fired and that she was very scared um, for her friends. My daughter happened to be home today, which I feel kind of bad because I said kind of suck it up, but I can't, I'm just so happy she was home. What brings you here then if your daughter's already home? You're, you're, you said nieces, nephews? Yes, um, I actually work in this building and I was in a massage because I'm a massage therapist um, and I was in a massage when the news came out and I didn't know if my daughter was okay. I, really uh, impossible not to identify with that and I think her, uh, the sentiments she's sharing there were felt thousands of times today by so many others who knew that they had loved ones in the school. Yeah. We, Rod Maloney has ha, had a good friend and his mm -hmm. special needs mm -hmm. child was in that yeah. school and, yeah. and somehow he was able to at least communicate via text. But some of these kids, you know, we, we said they were running to the mire, but some of these kids just ran through the woods and wound up in this like 
just right. middle of an intersection by themselves in the cold and snow and thank goodness they were able to find them and get them to safety yeah. but it's those moments that you're like we had talked about you hear that gunshot and you're you're running for yeah. your life and you don't know what in the world is going on i just had an email from someone saying that we've mentioned alice training a couple of times and you've heard police talk about that you'll hear that uh, here perhaps over the next couple of days and that, that it might be helpful to mention alice training is the protocols that a lot of schools have adopted uh, on exactly how they should respond if there is an active shooter situation. Uh, it, it deals with the way teachers are supposed to behave, uh, with the way security personnel at the school is supposed to behave, and the way students are supposed to respond when they receive those first alerts. Uh, uh, Alice training was apparently uh, in use today at, at Oxford High. Yeah, a lot of, of schools obviously, they practice, but yeah. you, you know. Like we said, horrible thing to have to be prepared for. Uh, it makes uh, those crazy um, uh, nuclear drills that we used to go through back in my day. They, they seem kind of quaint in comparison to worrying about a gunman uh, roaming the halls, but well, that was the situation today. Like a fire or something like that. Sure. At least you can see the fire, you kind of know where it's going and you can get out in a sense. So I don't want to say it's, it, it's better or worse, but with, with a gunman, you, you don't know what's next. You don't know if someone's down the hall. You, right. And it's such an unpredictable environment that you have no practice with. And, and it's just you don't you don't know how it's to what respond. you and I were talking about earlier you can you can try and prepare for everything all kinds of scenarios uh, and conditions that might exist you can't really prepare yourself for the terror of it for the way that you respond emotionally uh, when you start hearing a gunshot down the hall and that's teachers parents and students alike of course mm -hmm. and also whoever is the, the gunman has no idea how he's going to respond to that moment, or gunmen. Uh, but in this case, it was just one 15-year-old 15 15 sophomore. sophomore student who is uh, in custody. But again, the lockdown remains in effect at a number of locations. That includes McLaren Hospital, uh, where at least some of these students who were wounded were taken. And your heart has to go out to those families and the friends and the students who now are literally sitting at home. Let's say they were able to get to their parent and get safe. You know, they're wondering, did their friend make it? They're wondering if their teacher is okay. And we're just sitting here on pins and needles waiting for another hour, hopefully, to get a little bit more information. But it, it's frightening in some of these messages we've gotten from the school they said you know if you if you text your child and they don't respond please call this number and i just can't imagine having to be right. that person to have to call that yeah, number horrendous we do have this uh, sort of weird um uh, scenario that's hanging out over top of all this from the interview that we just heard with Jason Colthorpe that there has been a lot of unease at Oxford High School uh, in recent days uh, and that some students uh, just did not feel comfortable or safe going to school today and we have no idea if what they were worried about is exactly what played out today but of course Occam's razor would be that sometimes the simplest explanation is the right one uh, we'll exact we'll see where that leads and perhaps police can brief, brief us a little bit later here uh, if you're just joining us we expect our next briefing on what's happened today at Oxford High School a little more than an hour from now coming up at about 5 o'clock. You'll see that live, of course, when it happens. In the meantime, we've got our reporters spread out all over town. Um, at the hospital, at the mire, where all the parents have been uh, waiting to try to be reunited with their students, uh, and of course at the school as well. Meantime, the governor just released mm -hmm. a statement in reference to the shooting in Oxford, and I will uh, read this for you. My heart breaks for the students, teachers, staff, and families of Oxford High School. The death of multiple students and the shooting of many others, including a teacher, is horrific. 